All right, everybody, I'm going to introduce you to my preferred software for continuous improvement, and that is Minitab. Uh, www.minitab.com. We'll probably uh, go there in a second when I show you some of the tutorials. This is used, you know, 85% of statistics are made up on the spot, but I don't have a single client doing Lean Six Sigma and continuous improvement that isn't using Minitab. Uh, more importantly, um, my clients will actually switch from other software to it uh, when we use it in the class. Uh, I think primarily because it's so user friendly. With this software you don't have to be a statistician, you just need to be able to find the right statistics. And I've created some uh, roadmaps that will hopefully help you with that. Uh, this one is called the new chart tool with buzzwords which I'll provide. And just to kind of go through it, this section down here uh, you would use for just a Y. So just your Y, you're doing probably either the measure or the control phase of DMAIC. And basically you just say, is my data continuous or discrete? And then is it in time order or not in time order? I also make a note that when data is in time order, you can do both. Okay, you can do a graphical summary, for example, and control charts, um, which would be your SPC terms. Uh, but if your data is not in time order, you can only do this section right here. The other thing I'd like to highlight is I think every statistical test has a buzzword uh, that's associated with it if the person is saying it right. And if you can hear the buzzword, for example, when I want to do the measure phase for continuous data, I want to know if my data is normal. We talked about that with the Excel spreadsheet. Well, I've created a tab. Uh, for each buzzword where I tell you where in Minitab you could go to do that. So for example, if you want to test normality, there's three places that I recommend or three tools uh, that you could use. And this would be the drop down. You'd click on stat, basic stats, graphical summary. Uh, then up here, this would be you have a Y and X's. And basically you would say, is my Y continuous or discrete? And then you would say, is my X continuous or discrete? And then you would basically, you know, vision taking your two fingers, pressing one here and one here, and then bringing them together. If you have a continuous Y and a continuous X, uh, these are the typical tools that we use in Lean Six Sigma, uh, scatter plots, regression, and stepwise regression. Now, I'm only going to cover, you know, 5% of statistics. Um, but what's interesting when doing problem solving is these stats do 95% of the work. Uh, the advanced analytical modeling and stuff like that you know, it's more used by actuarials and people like that. Um, we don't really hit that very often in, um, in problem solving. So again, uh, the buzzword is predictor if you were in this corner. So I can just scroll down on this little spreadsheet. Ah, there's the buzzword predictor. And then again, I tell you, you can go to Minitab Assistant Regression and you would do that if you have one Y and no more than five X's. I see a little typo there. And then stat regression, regression fit a model if you have more than five X's, and that would be stepwise. So I'm going to be referring to that um, as I go through uh, Minitab. So here's Minitab. It's a cell-based uh, worksheet. So anything you have in Excel, you can just copy and paste over. Uh, you would just you know click here. That's the key. If you have a column heading, you can't paste here. We are used to pasting in row one in Excel, but watch what happens if I put my name here. Watch what C3 does. It now is a text column, and maybe I want to put my weight uh, for the last, you know, few days to show that I'm losing weight. The problem is this text is now classified as text, um, and it's always going to be that as long as a word's in there. Uh, just like in Excel, I can highlight the column and hit delete if you happen to do that, and then just start over, and now I can put my weights in there, and you'll see here that this column is numerical. All right, uh, I bring that up because if you ever say, you know, I wanted to do something in Minitab, my data didn't show up, you might want to check first and see if you made that mistake. Minitab um, tries to mistake proof you, you know, using our lean term, poke you okay, it tries to make it impossible to do the wrong hypothesis test. Okay, so, um, you know, when we're doing lean Six Sigma, we start off with what is your Y, right? I'm just going to make some notes here. What is your Y metric? All right, so I'm sitting down with a client. I ask them what their Y is, and they say that it's uh, the pin length for a component. I'm going to use a manufacturing example. 
um, and this is a small pin in millimeters that we use for, I'm going to make it something serious like a, an aircraft engine. All right, so I've got the Y, and then a lot of people forget this part. What is the question you want to answer? See, that will drive, really, going back to here, these are really the questions that people want to answer, and I find that people make hypothesis testing hard because they forget to write down the question. Once you've said the question you want to answer, so basically, how are we doing would be that question. Then you get the data to answer the question, right? And that would be our data collection plan that we talked about. Uh, in this case, they've already given me the data. So, you know, one of the powers of the data collection plan, though, is it helps me answer uh, how it was collected. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. But basically, once you've got all your data, you determine data type. You determine if it's in time order. And you go from there. So I'm talking to my client. He says this is uh, the length of the pins. I go, is this the last? Let me see how many data points we have here. Is this the last 100 pins off the line? And he says, yes. And then I ask him, well, how did you collect this? Is each pin its own measure? Did you do 100 today? Or is this a subgroup? Uh, that would be very important in your time series uh, training. If it's a subgroup, meaning what he's going to tell me is he's collected this simply five pins an hour. So rather than measure every pin, they've measured five pins every hour. So I've got the questions answered. Now, what I like about this question is, how are we doing? That's how business people tend to talk. They don't know the statistical way to answer that question. But the good news is, the data type dictates what you can do. Uh, so I can go here, go back here. I'm just doing the Y. How are we doing? Well, it's continuous. Uh, here's some graphs I could do. But this is my go-to um, tool in Minitab for the measure phase of the DMAIC. And remember, we're doing measure first, and then we'll do define, because I don't know if we have a problem yet. Um, I also am going to give you a PDF that kind of maps out the define, measure, and analyze phase of DMAIC. And I can also look here. The first thing I want to do when data is continuous is the graphical summary. So let's just jump right into Minitab. I find it's easier to cover it by doing it. Uh, you got a couple options. If I go uh, to uh, the buzzwords. Is my data normal? That would be stat, basic stats, graphical summary. I also tell you to do that here, stat, basic stats. Uh, there's also a wonderful feature in Minitab now called the Assistant, which will do all this for you. So let's, let's try um, all those paths. So first off, if you kind of know what you're doing, stat, basic stats, graphical summary, pin length, and I have no X, that would be an X. Whenever you see two boxes in Minitab, I don't care what it's called, the Y goes in the first box, and if you have an X, it will go in the second. So I hit OK. Uh, I just love how fast Minitab is, and uh, my p-value is less than 0.05, so my data fails the normality test. Uh, by the way, sometimes you can right-click here in Minitab and click Help, and it will take you right to an online support to include telling you how to interpret. I think this is why most college professors don't use Minitab, is frankly, it gives away the answer. Um, you can really self-teach yourself statistics in Minitab because by going there, I also have an example uh, of a tutorial that I can do. And if you were to click this, it will open the file uh, and we were able to assess the results. So it's a, just a phenomenal piece of software. So I, you know, I've got all my basic stats. Uh, there's my median. Uh, the curve looks bimodal to me, which probably explains why the p-value is less than 0.05, which, you know, I'm a problem solver. So when I look at data and charts and graphs, I'm not just running them. I'm looking at them to say, you know, can I learn anything from this? Could one of these be the issue that I'm facing if there is a problem? Now, right now, we don't know if we have a problem. We just have uh, the data. You can do hypothesis tests right here, however, if the manager says that all pins are supposed to be 15 millimeters in length, I cannot fit the average of 15 in the 95% confidence interval here. So 
uh, I would reject the null hypothesis. We are not equal to 15. However, our median is, and this is why I say one of the things I do when dealing with non-normal data is I simply use the median. I find the median and what are called non-parametrics testing in problem solving are really the best way to deal with non-normal data personally. Uh, the other option was assistant graphical analysis and I just love this roadmap built in here by Minitab like if you didn't know what to do just click help me choose and look at this you don't even know what type of data you have click that and it gives you an example you say okay we've got continuous data and then hmm what do I want to know gives me some examples yeah you know I don't want just a graph I really want some data okay there we go so we're gonna do the graphical summary is your Y in one column yes pen length it is in time order no X, hit OK, and you get so much more through the assistant. It, this little thing right here next to the uh, question mark is called your session folder, and if you click on it, it will take you through all sorts of stuff. It'll even give you, you know, some example distributions, there's our data and time order, and it'll even give you a scorecard letting you know if your data is good enough, uh, you know, is this a good sample size, etc. So again, I like the assistant because it helps the lay person who doesn't do a lot of statistics. It actually gives you the answer. We failed the normality test. So what I'm going to do is use the median for my problem and goal statement if I have one. See, I don't know yet. This is just the basic data. So um, the manager's question was, how are we doing? We're doing continuous data. Um, we did our graphical summary. So really, the capability analysis or the sigma calculator, as we've talked about, that's going to answer the question, how are we doing? Uh, let's go to the buzzwords. and oh, There it is right there, am I capable? And it says to go assistant capability analysis and then follow this roadmap. So let's do that. Assistant capability analysis. Our Y is continuous. All right. Uh, let's see, our data is in time order, so we can do this. And Minitab just wants you to answer a question here, is your Y. When Minitab says where's your data, it is talking about your Y and your Y only. So our Y is in one column, and it's called pen length. We collected it data in subgroups of five. By the way, I have a little teaching point. If you do not know what to put in the subgroup section, then you don't have one. So you would put one, and that just tells Minitab that each data is raw data. Uh, we know we have a subgroup size of five because the manager said every hour I measure five. And then we have to ask him, what are your spec limits? So you have to have a spec limit to calculate uh, capability. We know his target, he wanted to be 15 millimeters. And let's just say that a pen can be 14.98 inches long all the way to 15.02. I just want to highlight you don't have to have both but you have to have one. Services you typically just have an upper spec it shouldn't take more than five minutes to check into a hotel and you typically don't have a target. So let's hit OK and unfortunately we are not doing good. Um, not good at all. 47% uh, of our data is out of spec for a sigma of 1.2 five seven you have to add one and a half to what Minitab gives you because they have bought into something called the one and a half sigma shift which if you're interested in that just google it um, I love that Minitab gives you the answer here if you hover over hover over some of this stuff it tells you everything uh, about what's going on but you can just see the data does not fit within the specs now some of you if you don't want to use Sigma but you come from a manufacturing background if you'll just scroll again I clicked on the session folder there's our time series plot so our data has no special cause variation it ran the X bar R chart for us which is by the way uh, if I go to the PDF that would be the next slide to do so <laughs> Believe it or not, the assistant's like a one-stop shop. Watch this. It tells us capability. It tells us we have no special cause variation. It gives us the p-value. And then here it gives us some of our metrics. But any of you guys and ladies in uh, manufacturing that uses more of a CPK or PPK, uh, they're right here. So our CPK is 0.15. And if you've ever taken an operations class, that should be about, you know, around 1.33 is an industry standard. And 
um, you know, our data failed the normality test. However, one of the things Minitab will do is try to transform it for you, um, which I don't tend to do. I tend to skip that because I don't like that it actually creates new numbers. Uh, but in this case, it said it wouldn't work. So basically, we're, we've done the measure phase, if you look at the roadmap. But let me show you where um, this is. You can do a run chart or a control chart. Uh, if I go to my session folder, the buzzword is special cause variation. When you're doing a run chart or a control chart, you're saying, is there any non-random patterns in my data? And there's two tools you can do in Minitab, control charts and run charts. So for this exercise, I'll do a control chart. I'll go to assistant control charts. Our Y is continuous. We did collect our data in groups. It was eight or less. It's the X bar R. All right, so pin length, subgroup size of five. And I'm going to let Minitab draw the control limits, which if you recall, control limits are simply lines drawn at plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. Hit OK. And we have a stable process. So here's the takeaway. We have a stable process that is not capable. All right, so we are not doing well. By the way, uh, Six Sigma is not about reducing variation. That's not all it is. But this, in this example, we are on target. Um, Although this is saying we the average differs from 15, but remember the median is 15. And by the way, that's a great example. The average says we're not equal to 15. Let's see if the median is. So I'm going to non-parametrics, which I believe is a whole course offered. I'm going to do the one sample Wilcoxon, which is the one sample t-test for non-normal data. Pen length. I want to know if we're equal to 15. And the p-value is less than 0.05. So I was deceiving myself by looking at the graphical summary. That's why it's, you know, you can't just look at a graph and uh, do a hypothesis. This is saying that statistically our mean and our median are not equal to 15. So um, this is why sigma and CPK were created because going back to here, our real problem is that we're off target and we have too much variation. So what I would do now, how do I get a problem and goal statement if I'm going to use sigma? Well, I could go to Lee's 70% rule, right? Let me go back there. I should have had that open. All right, get that open. And what I could use uh, is some benchmarking. So we want to make defects go down. So I'll go here. Uh, 472,840 out of a million. Okay, so down is good. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to put 473,000. I have ADHD and I've already forgotten what that number was. Entitlement, 1.33 CPK is the best in class for manufacturing. That equates to 4.8 sigma, which is about 482 defects per million opportunities. And so we're going to try to get down to 100. 42,000 defects. Another way you could do this is you could say we're at 1.57 sigma. And then that, that example up would be good. We're at 1.57 sigma. And the best in class for manufacturing is 4.8. And our goal would be to get to 3.831 sigma, uh, which again, going back equates to, you know, that example. So that is the measure phase for Six Sigma. So I would say problem currently, we are at 1.57 Sigma, right? And our goal is to increase Sigma to 3.831. Again, just to be sure, uh, 473,000 was our defects. I could try that as well, 473,000. And I know, again, all I did was go to like a sigma table and look up 4.8 sigma, and that's 482-ish defects. So you could say the problem is currently we produce 473,000 defects per million, right? That's a very common me uh, met metric for manufacturing, and we want to reduce 
to 142,000. Okay, so I have just done one, just a quick introduction in the mini tab, uh, and then two, I just did the measure phase for continuous data using mini tab.